All right. I think most head coaches are killing their goalies in practice. All through minor hockey, it's a huge problem. Today, we're going to get into how you fix it and some advice that you should pass along to your head coach and how he can do a better job managing his goalies and effectively using the goalies in practice. All right, we've got the internet. We've got great YouTube channels like this one. And we gotta learn as a head coach. Whether you played goal or not, you need to learn. The resources online are available and you don't wanna have what I coined purposeful ignorance. If I had a dollar for every time I heard a head coach say something like, I don't know anything about goaltending, I'll just put him in the net. Listen, a Formula One driver needs to know about the viscosity, the tire breakdown. They need to know the tires, even though that's not their job as a driver, they're just supposed to drive. Same thing for a head coach, your success your ability to win tournaments, championships, depends on your goaltending. So take leadership as a head coach. Learn online, there's a million videos. I've got three or 400 myself. Learn the terminology, learn the fundamentals. Here's another pet peeve I have with head coaches with respect to goaltending and minor hockey. Listen, communicate well in advance who's starting. I know the reason you do it is you want to, in your mind, make both goalies ready to play and not let the one off the hook. Maybe being a little mess around, jerk around guy in the dressing room. It doesn't work. If it worked, they would do it in the NHL. And they don't tell the goaltenders in the NHL after warm-up who's starting. They give them a little bit of a warning. So do that in minor hockey. Be respectful to the kid. Make sure the backup goalie doesn't mess around and make sure he's ready to go too. But tell who's starting in advance. Don't pull the rabbit out of the hat at the last second. Let them know you're gonna get better results. So instead of having both guys 80% ready, you'll have one guy 100% ready and another guy 80% ready. That's the way to do it. All right, practices where goalies get killed. When I was a kid with my crappy gear, I was crying every practice. Shooters shooting with unrealistic situations and goaltenders get killed in practice. So head coaches, you need to take ownership on how to run more goalie friendly practice. Let's talk about proportional training. In the game, most attacks on a goalie are from zone setups. But what we do in practice, if you watch any minor hockey practice, it's a lot of J drill, a lot of Wisconsin drills, two on O, three on O, line rushes. Of course, line rushes happen in the game, but not in the proportion that coaches are delivering them in practice. And where in a game does a guy come down the wing and take a slapper from the top of the circles? Does it happen? Yes. Is it common? No. And most of the times in practice, goalies get in bad habits because shots are coming too quickly. Goalies don't have time to respect where the puck goes off their body, at least visually, to see it into the corner, to track it into the corner. That needs to happen. So coaches, build gap in your drills so goalies can respect the puck when it leaves their body. Secondly, do drills that they're gonna see in a game. Zone setup type stuff, less line rushes, more zone setups and make it realistic. There's never been rapid fire drills that translate into a game, so stop with the rapid fire stuff. Make practices realistic and your goaltenders will pay off with more tournament wins and more championships. Now, you got your goalies in the game, how do you manage warmups? Here's what you need to do. Make the warmup for the goalie, not the shooters. Now, I would suggest having a, one of the trusted players put the goalie in the net with 10, 15 pucks in the slot, floaters to the glove, floaters to the blocker, low gut traps, so the goalie can get used to tracking the puck and feeling the puck. And uh, here's a key thing. With warm-ups, make them realistic like in practice. The old big circle where this guy shoots, that guy shoots, that guy shoots, that guy shoots, that guy shoots, doesn't do anything. Goalie doesn't get to go down on low shots. He's trying to protect himself from getting killed. And the one where they come out of the corner, shot, 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 shot. That doesn't get the goalie warmed up. All that does is create bad habits. So please try to address warmups. Make it for the goalie, not the shooters. Listen, as a goaltender, we've all been pulled. We don't have it. We get yanked, we give up 10 goals. I think I even gave up 18 goals one night. We're always going to have a goalie situation where there's going to be the need to pull the goalie. But coaches, here's how you do it professionally. When you put the other goaltender in and the goalie that got pulled sits on the bench, physically go over, pat them on the back, no matter how angry you are, whisper in their ear saying you'll have it next game, whatever. But the parents see that, it helps bring the emotional temperature down. You do on the old crossed arm, stare down at the kid on the bench. You're not Scotty Bowman, you're not Mike Keenan. 
be a human being. If you pull the goalie, okay, go down, talk to him, settle him down, and pat him on the back. The team sees that, the parents in the crowd sees that, and you're gonna have a better result instead of creating a long-term habit of bad goals, bad goals, bad games. And this is what you do with the goalie's confidence if you pull him with anger. Again, when you leave the rink, don't blow through the lobby after you pull a goalie. Go to that goalie's parents and say, listen, Timmy didn't have it tonight. Love Timmy, we're gonna get him back in there. I just thought the team would be better getting the other goalie in there. But don't avoid the parents because that's gonna create escalating problems. Be professional when you pull the goalie. You need to make your goalies accountable in practice. Now, when I played college hockey, Mitch Korn had uh, girls up in the crowd that kept a save percentage in practice. And I'm not suggesting you need to do that every practice, but have somebody who's not a relative randomly once in a while calculate save percentage in practice and post it for the kids after practice. Goalies need to know shots matter in practice, battling matters in practice, and the team feeds off that when they see the goalie battling and competing in practice, making sure every puck is meaningful. So once in a while, throw a save percentage out in practice so the goalies know they're being watched. My last piece of advice is please don't bring in a beer league goalie coach or some father. Are there some fathers that are going to be politically balanced? Yes. Is there a risk that they might favor their own kid? Of course. So if you have nothing, sometimes that's better than creating an environment that's not going to be healthy. Now, there's some beer league goalie coaches that can come out that maybe have learned some modern stuff, but if you're bringing out your buddy from Wednesday Night Legion Hockey who played in 1972, what's he going to teach a kid unless he's up on the modern stuff? So. I would rather see no goalie coaching than old goalie coaching from a beer league goalie or some dad that's just gonna focus and prioritize subtly on their own kid. Now, all of these tips can wrap up and help you have a better goalie that's gonna win you tournaments, win you championships. And I'm not trying to slam you head coaches, I'm trying to educate and help you. So let's get our goaltending better by being a better head coach to our goalies in practice. Our summer camps have filled for over 30 years. Spots are limited, every year it fills. I want you in our summer camp. Here's the difference with Future Pro summer camps. We have real credentials, real value, and real results. We talk about the credentials. This camp is run by school teachers, guys that have played and coached and scouted in the NHL. They've been there, done that. Our credentials are unparalleled. This is the only school you can go to with this level of credentials. At our summer camps, we give you real value. We give you 20 hours of ice time, video analysis, small group student ratio. It's the best in the business. We've been successful for 30 years because we run a great program run by teachers for the best value. Why come to summer camp with Future Pro? Because of the results. If you look, we've got three goalies in the NHL this year, Logan Thompson with Las Vegas, We've got Jack Campbell with Edmonton Oilers, and we got Jeremy Swayman with the Boston Bruins, plus all the kids we have in the OHL, college hockey, and over the last 30 years, our Hall of Fame is pretty immense. You can look into our website and you can see our Hall of Fame. Are you going to be next? We want to see you in our summer camps this year throughout southwestern Ontario. We have camps in London, Strathroy and Godrich. We have many programs that fit your different levels, whether it's developmental level for the entry level kids, advanced level, elite level and the prospect camp, which is an application only camp available to kids that are on their way, already playing high level AAA, already playing junior, pro, et cetera. So if you wanna find out about any of those levels, reach out to Future Pro now at info at futurepro.com and I'll get back to you right away. All right, Ben, we wanna to talk to the goaltenders today about some basic fundamentals related to the stance. Now, first thing we let's go through is the stance depths. Your stance, like your fingerprints, everybody's is gonna be different. I don't like goalies to be mimics, where you copy Lundquist's stance or flurry or whatever it is. Take pieces from all these goalies that you watch, see if it works in your game, but make your stance your own. You shouldn't look like anybody else. You should look like yourself. So stance steps. First thing, when the puck's not dangerous, it's out around the perimeter of the ice, we're gonna use something called relaxed concentration stance. So show us what that looks like. Stick may not be on the ice, you're resting, you're conserving energy, you're looking around screens, and you still would have the ability to move easily from that. Now the next stance depth is what I call the movement ready stance. So you get down a little bit deeper, more shot ready, still conserve a little bit of energy, but now you can move around pretty well. 
And the final one would be the razor ready shot stance that you're gonna be in just before Ovechkin takes a heater. Now, hold that stance, let your legs burn a little bit. The one risk you have when you get really wide, weighted on your inside edges, is going to be hard to move laterally. So you're gonna end up having to slide or dive. And if you look at a couple features, let's go back to your movement ready stance. With any good stance, let's talk about stick position. You want your stick gapped up away from your feet. You don't want your blocker sitting back on the side of your pad because that hinders stick involvement later. You want it out in front of you projected. And ideally you want the palm of the glove facing the trajectory of the puck. You don't want to have big armpit holes. And it's got to be a comfortable stance because that's the position you're in ready to fire off all your save selections. Some things, old school, you can rest, rest a little bit. We used to talk about double coverage. So back in your stance again. And double coverage simply means like your blocker might be in front of your pad or your glove might be here. Now, do I like it? No, but it's not fatal because understand one thing, you're not making saves from that position. You're going down and then gloves can get into that position. I prefer you not to have double coverage, but it's not as big as issue as people make it out to be. A couple last things about stance. Besides that little blocker issue, sometimes we see glove issues. We've seen old Kippersoft type scenarios where the glove is facing out to this side or facing here, or we got the glove claw clawed in. When you're playing against high-end players, you gotta have the glove in a position that does two things. Easy access to the flight of the puck, but also visually discouraging. If you don't have it in a position that discourages the guy and you have a glove way down low, he's gonna wanna try it. So let's take these tips today from your goalie stance position, perspective, relax concentration, movement ready, razor ready. Let's get our stick gapped. Let's have our gloves projected forward. And let's try to avoid double coverage, but realize it's not the fatal flaw that it used to be in 1972.